In this video, we're going to be using an open source ORM library to access our database. And we're going to be implementing this into an example application. Now, this makes it really easy to access your database, whether you're creating records, updating records, deleting records, or creating relations between different models. So let's jump in with an example of how this might work. At the moment on the index page of this project, I've got absolutely nothing. And we're going to be using this index file here as just a test ground to do things. However, when it comes to it, you might be using active record functionality within controllers, perhaps, or other classes. So inside my database, then I've got a table called users here. I've got three columns here. One is ID, which is just an auto incrementing ID, as you'd expect a username and an email. Now, how am I going to access these records with PHP active record? Well, in this case, I've set this up. So my user model relates to my user database table, and this happens automatically. Now I'm using PSR for auto loading, which we'll also be discussing a little bit later when we build this application up from scratch. It won't take too long, but it is a much better way to structure how you work with your application. Anyway, say I wanted to access a user with an ID of one. I'm going to create a variable here and I'm going to use the user model, which I've imported just up here. And I'm going to use the find method here. And this is a static method. So I'm going to find the user with an ID of one, like so. And down here, I can then do echo user. And then perhaps I want to grab the username from this. So as you'd expect at user with an ID of one, we have a username of Alex. So you can see here, we now get Alex out. And of course, you can do the same with email like so, and that will give the email address out. So what about creating records? Well, we can use the user model like so, and we can use the create method, passing in an array of the data that we want to insert. So as you'd expect, we'd do username here, we would choose a username, and we would duplicate that down and then maybe fill in an email address here and do the same for that. So pretty straightforward stuff. This makes it really easy to do things like this. And there we go. When we go back to our database, we refresh and that record's been created. So you might have seen things like this with Laravel's Eloquent if you work with Laravel. If not, don't worry. This is an alternative solution that you can implement into any project pretty much. And this makes it really easy to do. So we're going to be using PHP Active Record. Like I said, it's an open source ORM library, an object relational mapper library. And that's based on the active record pattern, which is why it's called PHP Active Record. And if you're not sure what the active record pattern is, go ahead and look it up and it'll explain that pretty straightforward. So we're going to be pulling this in from packages. So you will need Composer installed. If you don't have Composer, head over to getcomposer.org and install that so you can use it on your command line. That works for pretty much all operating systems. So let's get going, look at how we can install Active Record, and we'll add it to our project to see how we can use it as we've just seen. So as I mentioned, we are going to be doing this completely from scratch, and it will take a little bit longer than you might like to set up your application, but the benefit will pay off later down the line when you go to expand your application in the future. So I have a terminal open here, and as long as I have Composer installed, what we're going to do is we're going to pull in PHP Active Record as a dependency. And we do this from Packages, which works directly with Composer. So basically what we want to do is we want to pull in a version of this into our project as a dependency. If you've worked with Composer before, this will be completely straightforward to you. Otherwise, just following the steps and I'll try my best to explain as we go along. So the first thing that we want to do is if we run the composer command, we can go ahead and search for packages. We know that this exists at PHP hyphen active record and then slash and the same thing. So what we can do is we can show information about this package. So we can say composer show PHP hyphen active record slash PHP active record. And that's going to search my composer.json file, which I doesn't exist at the moment. And then it's going to look under packages. And there we go. So we've got the information about this. We know that we want to pull in version 1.1 and we'll pull in 1.1.star. So all we do is composer require and then php hyphen 
active record slash php hyphen active record like so and then it asks us to obviously provide a uh, version requirement in this case 1.1.star so that's created a composer.json file if I open up my text editor here and expand this you can see that not only has my composer.json file been updated with the require property it's also downloaded this dependency as well so we now are able to include this within our project which is really cool so we're going to set up a basic structure to our application and we're going to be using PSR for auto loading just so we can namespace our classes and make it a lot easier to pull in everything that we need this just takes out the hassle of having to go ahead and manually require each class in so inside of my active record directory I'm going to create a new folder called app now inside of this, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to save this out as start.php. This is where we're going to start up everything in our application that we need. In this case, we need to require in the dependencies that our application requires. And we can do this easily by requiring in the autoload file within the vendor folder. So if I just open the vendor folder here, we've got autoload.php. So I'm going to require in and then I'm going to hit dir concatenate this onto going back a directory into vendor and autoload.php that's essentially a, uh, a way of saying go back a directory include vendor autoload because we're currently within the app directory here so now that we've got that let's actually create a index file inside of our main directory just something we can test on here and we obviously now need to pull in our start file so that's in app start.php so within start you can start up sessions and do whatever you want so inside of here we're going to be testing now what we need to do is go ahead and connect with active record at the moment if I open my browser you can just see we get an empty page no errors which is a good sign so we need to use active record to initialize a connection somewhere so let's go ahead and do that now it's namespaced under active record and what we're after is this config and we use this initialize method and then in here we pass in a closure we have a config argument here and then we're going to go ahead and use this to set our connections let's just bring this down a little bit so set underscore connections is a method that we use to basically set the connections that we want to see and we can do this under different environments for now I'm just going to demonstrate it under development but you can choose this depending on your different environments here so we need to define which driver that we want to use so in this case it's MySQL and then what we want to do is provide the username and the password in my case it's root and root then we need to connect to the host in my case it's 1.7.0.0.1 and then we do a forward slash and choose the database name in my case it's website as we saw up here now, if you don't have a password don't worry just get rid of that it might look a little bit strange having the colon and the at symbol uh, but that's just how you would structure it so let's go ahead and refresh now and see if we haven't done anything wrong okay we have looks like I've spelled initialize wrong like so and there we go so what we now want to do is look at PSR for auto loading because what we can actually do within this config is define which folder that our models are kept in but that's a little bit tricky because we might just not have one folder inside of our app directory that holds all of our models you might do in which case you could have a models folder like so and you could say something like config set model directory and then in here you would define that it's in app models like so or just models in this case because we're already within the app directory and from there what it would do is it would pick up all of the models inside of your models directory and allow you to extend active record but in our case we want to structure this a little bit differently with PSR for auto loading and uh, active record will support that so let's delete that models directory and we're going to head over to composer.json to auto load everything in so in this case we say auto load and normally we would provide maybe something like a class map you might have seen 
But in our case, we are using PSR4 auto loading. If you're unsure what that is, we do have a lesson on, uh, on this. So you can go ahead and check that out. Otherwise, you can head over to the PHP Fig website to read up more on PSR4 auto loading. So in this case, we need to provide a namespace. This is the namespace that our, our root namespace. In this case, it's going to be code course. And then we provide a double backslash. And now what we want to do is provide for the value of this where this is stored. In this case, it's going to be an app code course. Now we haven't created this yet. So let's go ahead and do that now. Create a new folder in here and we'll call that code course. Now this is where the PSR4 auto loading comes in. We can have uh, whatever directory structure we want. As long as we namespace this in the same manner, the classes will be automatically loaded in using Composer. But in this case, what we want, need to do is we need to refer to uh, Composer and use dump auto load, passing in the optimized flag. Now what that will do is it will dump all of the um, classes that you have inside of your directory structure according to your namespacing and allow you to use it pulling in auto load. That might seem a bit confusing, but once we start to create some classes, it should make sense. So inside of here, we might have a new folder called users. And then inside of our users folder, we might just have some generic class that allows us to access the users database table. And in this case, the class is just going to be called user, not users. So we save that as user.php. Now we need to, need to namespace this according to PSR4 specification. In this case, we use the namespace keyword. We say code course slash users like so, because it's code course users, and then our resulting class is user. So whenever we want to use user, we'll have to refer to this, but we can just import them at the top of files. And we'll be looking at how we do that in the index file in a moment. So now that we've got our class user, how do we actually go about tying this to our database table users? Now it works on plurals. So in this case, our database table is going to be called users, and this will automatically pick that up because we've called the class user. You can modify this, so go ahead and check out the PHP Active Record documentation, and that will show you how you can define specifically which database table that you want to use. Now we need to extend active record here, but we can't just do this because what's going to happen here is it's not going to find this class. Now if we go ahead and dump our auto load again, and we go ahead and refresh and try and use this user class. So inside of index, say uh, we could do something like use code course users user we could say something like user equals new user. Now, when we refresh, it says class code course users active record not found. That's simply because inside of here, it's assuming that this is namespaced under this. But what we need to do is use um, active records model. And we'll just call that active record just so it makes things a little bit more readable. So we say, use active record model as active record. You can call this anything you want, or you can omit this all together, and then you can just refer to model here. But I like to call this active record. So now that we're using that, we should no longer get this error because that class has been found because we've provided the correct namespace and we've imported that up here. Now we don't need to write any code inside of this class, which is brilliant because what we can now do is use all of the functionality within active record, this model class here, because we've extended the user class. So now what we can do is go back to index and we can start to play around with this user model that we've imported up here. So we can go ahead and try that out now. Okay, so inside of SQL Pro, I've got um, a couple of records I'm just gonna delete. Let's say we'll delete everything here just so we can start afresh. So we'll delete all of these rows. So let's head over to here. I'm going to say user create, much like we saw at the start of the video. And I'm going to provide a username here and call that, say, Alex. And then we'll provide an email as well. And we'll say Alex at codecourse.com. 
So now when we go ahead and refresh here, because we've extended active record, we now have access to this create method. And as you'd expect, that record has been created inside of our database table. And likewise, we could say something like user equals maybe user find. And let's say we had some kind of session stored uh, somewhere in our application. For example, in start.php, let's say you had session started up here and you assigned something to a key in the session super global array. So for example, user ID, let's say that was one. You would then go ahead and reference that inside of here. There's obviously better ways to do this, but you would say session user ID. And then what you could do is you could say something like echo user username. And that would then pick up that record with an ID of one. Of course, at the moment, we don't have a ID of one. We have an ID of 15. So I'm going to need to change this inside of my start.php file to 15 and then go ahead. And there it is. So there's much more you can do with active record. This has just been a little taster about how you might set it up within your application. But we can do things like relationships between models. You can update, delete, create, as we've seen. There's a lot more that you can do here. So go ahead and check out the PHP active record documentation and see how you can integrate and use this within your next project.